there's a secret that power station and solar generator companies do not want you to know and it's the main reason why you are probably overpaying by hundreds of dollars for your solar equipment. Let me explain. This is Alejandro, a viewer of the channel. He recently emailed me that his family lives in Cuba and suffers from frequent blackouts and he wanted to send them solar panels to use with two different power stations. There's just one problem. He's on a tight budget, which means the solar panels sold by the power station brands are simply too expensive. But what those same brands don't want you to know is that nearly every power station out there is compatible with third-party solar panels that can cost hundreds of dollars less. It all comes down to knowing how to do two key things. The first is picking a compatible solar panel because not every panel works with every power station. And if you pick the wrong panel, you can damage your expensive power station. Fortunately, a power station will almost always clearly tell you which solar panels are compatible with it. You just have to know where to look. Some power stations will tell you on their solar charging port, like this one. Some will tell you on the back or bottom of the unit. And as a last resort, nearly all of them will tell you online on the product page or in the product manual. And don't worry, we will make sense of this blob of numbers and letters in just a sec. The first power station Alejandro mentioned is the Anchor Solix C300. And I was able to find its solar charging limits online in its product manual. The main two things Anchor tells us there is that it has a maximum solar input of 100 watts and that the solar panel voltage needs to be between 11 and 28 volts. And if you know anything about electricity, you might be thinking, where's the current limit? Uh, it took me some digging, but I found a support article that listed it as 8.2 amps. But here's the thing, for a lot of power stations, you can use solar panels that exceed the current and wattage limits, which is called over paneling. So what does Anchor have to say about the C300 in this regard? I emailed their customer support and they said that for the C300, you should stay within both the current and wattage limits and that exceeding either one may damage the power station. So now we know what specs Alejandro's first solar panel will need to have to be compatible with his C300. And don't worry, I will show you how to find compatible solar panels later on. Next, he mentioned the Dabson 600L. And I was able to easily find its solar charging limits in the specs section of its product page. And this time I called customer support to get their take on over paneling, but they didn't have an answer. I will send an email so that the Halyard team can further assist you with this one. That was not helpful at all. But their support team told me over email that excessive amperage or wattage will not harm the solar panel or the 600L. And just like that, we know the solar charging limits for both of Alejandro's power stations. And again, we will do some online shopping here in a sec so you can see how to find solar panels within these limits. But before we do that, we need to look at the second key thing to charging a power station with third-party solar panels, which is picking the right solar charging cable. Many, if not most, power stations include the right solar charging cable in the box. But when I looked at what Alejandro's units came with, I learned that both of them do not include solar charging cables, so he'll have to buy his own. The good thing is, it's super easy to do. You just have to find out what type of connectors your solar panel has, which Big hint, they are almost always MC4 connectors, which look like this. Then you need to find out what type of solar charging port your power station has. The four main ports I see most often are XT60, which looks like this and is usually this yellow color, XT60i, which has the same shape as XT60, but is orange, Anderson, also called Anderson Power Pole, which are one red and one black square, and finally, there are these circular DC barrel ports, which are the most annoying because they can come in a wide range of sizes with names like DC7909 or DC5521. So you can typically just look at the solar charging port on your power station and figure out what type it is that way. This one clearly has an XT60 port, for instance. But what if you don't have a power station yet, like how I don't have the two that Alejandro is asking about? Or you can't immediately tell what solar charging port it has just by looking at it, like with this DC barrel port. Then you have to go hunting on the product page or in the product manual. For the Anchor Solix C300, I was able to find the solar port type on the product page, and for the Dabson 600L, I spotted it in one of the product pictures. And they both have the port type listed in their product manual. And for the Pecron power station I showed you with the DC barrel port, I was also able to find the exact size it uses on its product page. If all that fails, and it sometimes does because again, some brands 
really don't want you to know this information, then look at a few reviews of the power station online. So we now know all the information we need for Alejandro to be able to solar charge his power stations with much cheaper third party solar panels. And it's finally time to use this information to pick out the equipment. For the C300, I'm gonna search on Amazon for a 100 watt solar panel since that's its max solar wattage. There are so many options, it's overwhelming but I've been using Renogy panels for years and they tend to have good power output. So I'll check out their 100 watt panel. You might see the 12 volt in the title and immediately think, oh, that's definitely within the voltage range for the C300, so it's compatible. But confusingly enough, the panel's actual voltage is way different than the voltage listed in its product name. So you have to look at its specs. Good brands will clearly list their panel specs somewhere on the product page. We can see that the wattage is indeed 100 watts, which is great, but the voltage, and for this, you always wanna look at the open circuit voltage. It's way higher than 12. It's actually 22.8. However, good news, that is still within the C300's voltage range. And finally, the current, look at short circuit current in this case, is 5.3 amps, which is below that 8.2 amp limit. Now to get a little technical on you, and this is important, but I promise I'll keep it brief. You wanna leave some room between your solar panel voltage and the max solar voltage of your power station. This is because solar panel voltage increases as temperatures drop. And the rule of thumb is you want that cushion to be 20% of the panel's voltage if you live somewhere where it just gets like mildly cold, normal amount of cold, and then 25% if you live somewhere where it gets really cold. So for this particular panel, in an extreme edge case where you have extremely cold weather, this panel's voltage could exceed the C300's 28 volt limit, but for most people, including Alejandro's family in Cuba, you'll be perfectly fine. So great, in Alejandro's case, this 100 watt Renogy panel is compatible with his Anchor Solix C300. And look at that, it's currently $120 cheaper than Anchor's 100 watt solar panel. And no, that price difference is not just because the Anchor panel is a portable solar panel. But what does an incompatible solar panel look like? Well, here's another 100 watt solar panel from a brand called Bujar V. Again, you might look at the 24 volt in the product name and think 24 is less than 28, so I'm good. Perfectly reasonable assumption, but when we go to the product specs and look at the open circuit voltage, we see that it is actually greater than 28 so it is not compatible. Now for the Dabson 600L, it can handle up to 200 watts of solar input. So I'll search for a 200 watt solar panel. Now again, Renogy is a good brand. You can see I bought quite a few of their panels, but this HQST one is very cheap. So I'm gonna check out this one. And it took some searching, but I was able to find its specs in one of the product photos. And look at that, the wattage, voltage, and current of this panel are all within the Dabson 600L's solar charging limits. And again, the savings are insane. The HQST panel is currently $220 less than the 210 watt solar panel that Dabson sells on their website. And with this knowledge, you can even shop on places like Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, which have the best deals on used solar panels, especially big ones. Like check out this 360 watt one for just $95. Lastly, we've got the solar charging cable. This one is super easy. A quick tip, there are these like six in one, seven in one solar charging cables, which can be super useful if you wanna buy one of those, but I'll also show you how to buy a normal one. The way I do it is I type in the solar panel connector type. Again, it's almost always MC4, the word two, the power station solar port type, in the case of Alejandro's power stations, they're both XT60 and then the word cable. And we get a ton of compatible charging cables of different lengths and wire sizes. You might be tempted to buy a really long one of these cables to reach from wherever you're gonna put your solar panel to wherever you're gonna put your power station, but I've learned the hard way that you shouldn't do that. I think instead you should buy a short solar charging cable and then grab an extension cable with MC4 connectors on both ends. That way you can reuse the extension cable with other power stations that you might buy down the line and may have different solar charging cables. We've finally got our power stations and some compatible solar panels and solar charging cables. So let's try solar charging them. Starting with this small Pecron power station, which has similar solar charging limits to the Anchor Solix C300 and is also compatible with the Renogy 100 watt solar panel that we looked at. 
and it uses a DC5521 port, which is on this multi-adapter cable I have. It's definitely a cloudy day today, but I'm still getting around 43 watts of solar input. Next up is the Bluetti AC50B, which has similar solar charging limits to the Dabson 600L and can also handle excessive current and wattage, which means it's compatible with this Renogy 200 watt solar panel, and it uses an XT60 port. For this one, I'm currently getting around 80 watts of solar input. And finally, this is the Blue Eddy AC180, and it has a solar charging port with a higher 60 volt limit. So I'm going to connect this 200 watt solar panel, which is incompatible with the other two power stations because its open circuit voltage is 36.5 volts. And the AC180 uses a DC7909 port. And for this last one, we are currently getting around 80 watts of solar input. I'll let them solar charge for an hour and then we'll check on them and see how they're doing. And I'll put links to some of the products that I've been talking about in this video in the description below. And to Alejandro, I wanna say thank you for letting me share your email in this video. And I hope your family is doing well down in Cuba amidst these blackouts and staying safe. And after an hour, I checked the power stations and all three of them were still safely solar charging without issue. And even the next day in full sun, all were still charging safely or fully charged in one case from these much cheaper panels. Subscribe if you wanna see more videos on power stations and solar generator setups, but that's it for this one and I'll see you in the next one.